Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about the kettlebell figure eight front to back transition. This video is part of a larger series of videos where we are providing basic kettlebell instruction so that you can learn your fundamentals in order with good technique. If you learn the basics well, then you can move on to more advanced training sooner. We have previously covered the two-hand deadlift to build the base of our structure for picking things up. We went to our two-handed swing, the absolute most important exercise you will ever learn with a kettlebell. Then we went to and around the world, pointing our feet straight ahead and working on standing core firing. Then we went from below the waist to around the head and we did a halo that went one direction. Now we are going to go to a around the world with a figure eight. This is an exercise that gets us used to transitioning from one hand to the other, which is a skill we absolutely need in order to move into our hand-to-hand -hand swings and our different transitions so that we can learn to not put the kettlebell down. Kettlebells are specifically about building weight, swinging, endurance. That means learning to pick up a weight and not put it down for long periods of time. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. So you have to get really good and comfortable at doing your hand transitions. With this exercise, we are gonna use our two-handed deadlift technique to pick the weight up. We're gonna step up to the bell until the kettlebell is directly between the insteps of our feet. Focus on squeezing your quads at the top, squeezing your glutes at the top, rib cage down. We focus on that every time because that carries over to all of our athletic training in the future. Track your arms down the insides of your legs, palms face back, stand all the way up. We're gonna make our feet a little over shoulder width apart, about shoulder width and a half. Point your feet generally straight ahead because that's gonna help us fire the arches of our feet and build our foot endurance. Your feet are full of muscles and they are just as important as the muscles of your hands or the muscles of your core. Pass all the way around your body. Left hand goes under right leg, all the way around the body, right under left, all the way around the body, left under right, all the way around the body, right under left, all the way around the body, left under right, all the way around the body, right under left. Finish with the weight in front of you, bring your feet shoulder width apart, set the kettlebell down with good technique. Things we wanna focus on. We wanna point our feet straight ahead. Oftentimes, if people turn their feet out and they do this exercise, they will compromise their knee structure. By pointing our feet straight ahead, we are more likely to keep good ankle, knee, and hip alignment. People who have flat feet, should definitely focus on pointing their feet straight ahead because that's how the arches of their feet will learn to fire. That's how they will get stronger feet, stronger ankles, stronger knees, stronger hips, and therefore will reduce back pain. For every rep, go all the way around the body in between the figure eight. When we do that, we stand all the way up. We do all the things that we do when we stand up. We fire our quads, we squeeze our glutes, and we drive our rib cage down. Let's repeat it again with all of those things in mind. Step up to your kettlebell, feet shoulder width apart, hands go to the crease of the hip, get down, weight in the heels, knee is behind the line of the toe. Drive your shoulders away from your ears, stand all the way up, squeeze the glutes at the top, drive the rib cage down so that your abs can be on. Make your feet a little wider apart. It's not necessary for advanced athletes, but it helps people get more comfortable with this exercise in the beginning. Sometimes people feel like they're gonna hit themselves in the knee, so the wider feet helps that psychologically. All the way around the body. Transfer, left hand goes under right leg. Thumbs meet thumbs. All the way around the body, thumbs meet thumbs. All the way around the body, thumbs meet thumbs, stand all the way up, underneath, all the way up, underneath, all the way up, underneath. <sighs> Common mistakes that people will make. They will not stand all the way up on the around the body part. They will try to keep their legs bent the entire time and they will get very, very tired very quickly. The goal is to stand all the way up, go around the body, get all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. <sighs> Simple way to do this. 
count 10 passes under each leg. That means 10 hand transitions under the right leg and 10 hand transitions under the left leg. It's normally counted. One, two, three, four, all the way up to 20. 10 plus 10 is 20. This is a leg exercise, it's a glute exercise, it's a core exercise, and it's a grip exercise. Grip is fundamental to athletic training and transitioning from hand to hand with this basic drill will start to build your comfortability with your coordinated skill. This is usually part of a warm up. It's done around the body standing position, then halo, then figure eight front to back, and in the next video we will talk about figure eight back to front. Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about the kettlebell around the world figure eight, back to front. This video is part of a greater series of videos where we are providing basic kettlebell instruction on the basics as you would learn them in a private training studio. In the beginning, we talked about the two-handed deadlift where we set up our basic structure for our two-handed swing. Then we work on the two-handed swing. Then we start to work on standing structure around the world with your feet all the way together so you can learn to fire the arches of your feet to make your ankles, knees, hips, and lower back stronger. Then we go to halo from below the waist to a circle around the head to work on shoulder mobility and arm activation. Then we move to figure eight front to back so we can work on our hand transitions, thumb side to thumb side. Hand transitions are key to learning kettlebells because kettlebells are about intermediate weights for intermediate to long periods of time where you learn not to set the weight down. With this version of the exercise, you are not going to be able to see the transition coming and you're gonna to have to learn to rely on hand finding hand. We are going to pick the kettlebell up with good technique, step up to the kettlebell with our feet pointed straight ahead because that's the way we should walk. Focus on straightening your legs all the way out, tuck your tailbone underneath to squeeze your glutes, drive your rib cage down to activate your core. We do that with every kettlebell exercise. Track the hands down the insides of the legs, pick the kettlebell all the way up. In the beginning, people are gonna to wanna to make their feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. We are going to pass the kettlebell all the way around the body one and a half times. Now, right hand under right leg, hand find hand, around the body one and a half times. Left hand under left leg, all the way around the body, back to front, all the way around the body, back to front, all the way around the body, back to front, all the way around the body, back to front. When you're going around the body, the important part is that you stand all the way up. Drive your knees back, weight in the heels, activate the quad, squeeze the glute. Go all the way around the body. That right hand should be straight at the elbow. Get down as low as you need to, with good crown to coccyx alignment, grab with your left hand, all the way around, left hand from the back, grab, back to front, all the way around the body, grab, all the way around the body, grab. In the beginning, people start with doing 10 total passes under each leg, counted one, two, three, four, all the way up to 19, 20, 10 under each leg for a total of 20. The goal is to maintain our crown to coccyx alignment and keep our heels flat on the ground. The knee is still tracking behind the line of the toe, even when we are rotated. This is a core exercise. Anytime we pass the kettlebell around our body or go under a leg, it is a core exercise. We are building our base core functionality so that we can do more complex types of athletic core training later on. This exercise tends to be done in series. You tend to do your around the body with your feet all the way together first, focusing on pure standing structure with our feet pointed straight ahead so that we cannot turn out because we are trying to force the arches of our feet to fire because our feet need to get strong just like our grip needs to get strong. Then we go to our halo and we start orbiting around the head and we train basic shoulder mobility with that 90 degree structure of the arm which carries over to tons of other athletic applications later. Then we move our feet further apart and we do this figure eight, front to back. Think of this as a lightweight, dynamic deadlift. You're putting yourself into what could be considered a deadlift position and moving the weight around your body. Instead of using one big heavy weight and moving in a straight line, we are moving in arcs and circles because in real sports, 
arcs and circles and direction changes are part of everything that you do. Then we do this back to front. We learn for our hand to find hand without it being directly in our line of sight. So we start to build confidence with our grip. In the beginning, do not do this exercise over a surface that you could damage if you lose the kettlebell. Oftentimes in the beginning, people will lose a kettlebell one or two times before they figure out how to get their hands on the belt and close their hands all the way. It seems like a simple athletic skill, but it is not for the majority of the population. Close your hands all the way. Do not throw the bell from hand to hand. Make sure you stand up all the way when you're doing the pass around the body. Get down as low as you need to. Make your arm straight. If you try to keep your arm bent, people will end up damaging their elbow by placing too much tension on the tendons and the ligaments inside the elbow. It is important to point your feet straight ahead. If your feet are turned out and your ankles are rolled in, then you are going to end up not getting the training benefit that you want out of the exercise. Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to evolve our single direction halo into an alternating direction halo. This video is part of a greater series of numbered instructional videos where we are trying to provide kettlebell instruction as you would receive it in a personal training environment. The goal of this is to help people feel comfortable going out into the world to get more advanced kettlebell training because they have a solid foundation of the basics. And if you learn it from somebody else after you've already heard this, then you are more likely to retain the information and therefore more likely to get what you want out of training and to achieve your goals. Today's exercise is an alternating direction halo. A halo is very, very similar to a club, two-handed shield cast, an alternating shield cast, a mace gamma cast, or a mace 3 to 16, 10 to 2. All of these exercises are fundamentally the same. The only thing that differs is the length of the lever and the amount of weight of the lever. With a kettlebell, you can use more weight because the lever is shorter. Clubs are intermediate weights with intermediate levers, and maces are lighter weights with longer levers. But the coaching cues are essentially the same. The kettlebell alternating halo is the second easiest to learn because the short lever puts less torque on the shoulders, so it is more forgiving in the beginning. We have two pickup techniques that we have used so far. The feet together directly behind the bell and the feet on the outsides of the bell. Let's use feet outside of the bell with the kettlebell directly in line with the insteps of our feet today. Thumbs point towards the sky, track down, thumbs point forward. Slide your arms down the insides of your thighs, grasp the kettlebell, pick it up, heavy part on top. Arms, 90 degree angles, not too high, not too low. Crown to coccyx alignment, that means tailbone to the top of your head, should be generally straight line. Go around the head. Right hand goes to left ear. This is where we change from the other halo technique. Left hand, right ear. Right hand goes to left. Left hand goes to right ear. Right hand goes to left ear. Left hand goes to right ear. When you complete your reps, straighten your arms all the way out, drive your shoulders away from your ears, set the kettlebell down with good technique. The only thing that differs from this about the one direction halo is that we are going back and forth between opposite ears on each rep. In the beginning, we have people go one direction and they go around their head, either clockwise or counterclockwise for the appropriate number of reps and then they stop and change directions. On this exercise, you just change directions every rep. That sounds simple, but for a lot of people, they will have to say it aloud in order to accomplish the task. Most people are very good at moving one way. It's usually right hand because that's the hand that people tend to learn to throw with, or at least for 90 to 95% of the population. Left hand going past right ear tends to mess people up. I'm saying right hand past left ear because when we transition the heavy club swinging and both of your hands are on the same handle, that will be the cue. So we are keeping our cues consistent between kettlebells, clubs, and maces. That makes it easier to learn faster. Important things to remember, 90 degrees with the arm, elbows on the body. If you can see a big gap between the body from the front or the back, your elbow is too far out. Fold your elbow in until it's touching your shirt. Right hand goes past one ear. 
keep your head up the entire time. In the beginning, people will tend to try to duck underneath the bell because their shoulder doesn't move all the way. Get a lighter weight, keep your head up, move until the kettlebell is all the way behind you without your eyes or your head going up and down. Complete the rep, go the other side. Eyes forward, left hand goes to right ear. At the back of the movement, the kettlebell will be touching the back of your shirt. The goal of this exercise is to help you learn to stand all the way up and down and to get you to change back and forth between right lead and left lead. Changing leads is a crucial athletic skill, and if you can change leads equally well both ways, it helps you learn other more advanced athletic skills faster later. In the beginning, we tend to do five on each side for a total of 10, and we integrate it in between something like the kettlebell, around the world figure eight front to back, and then you would do the alternating halo, and then you would go back and do the kettlebell around the world back to front. With this exercise, you would do 10 total, five going each direction. So you would count one, two, three, four, five, etc., until you get to 10 reps. This exercise tends to be used as a warm-up, but it could be used as a muscle building exercise. Start with a lightweight. When the weight gets heavy enough, it will become a muscle building exercise on its own, and you could integrate it into any type of program, either as a warm-up or as a muscle building exercise done as say five sets of five or four time under tension. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. At 90 seconds, it does become a muscle building activity. This is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to figure out how to pick the kettlebell up to our rack position and put it down with one hand. This is a bridge technique to learning the clean. The clean is an exercise that people have a lot of difficulty learning because if they catch in the wrong position, then they end up hurting themselves. And if people continue to hurt themselves for long enough, they stop training and they don't reach their goals. This technique is just a bridge technique, which is done as people are learning the clean the first time. Step up to the kettlebell, feet pointed straight ahead because that's the way we walk and that's going to allow us to transition into stepping patterns later on. When you stand up, put your weight in your heels, straighten your legs all the way out. Tuck your tailbone underneath to squeeze your glutes. Drive your rib cage down to hollow out your core and to activate your abs. This standing structure is like a standing abdominal plank position. We're creating tension so that when we hold the weight at the top, the whole body supports it equally. We're gonna get down, we're gonna grab the kettlebell with one hand, the other hand is gonna support underneath it. Stand up, get the kettlebell up to our shoulder, and we're gonna to get to our rack position. The important part here is the handle. This is why we're doing this. We're picking it up with two hands, because people are gonna pick it up wrong in the beginning, and we're gonna give ourselves this opportunity to get to our correct position. Our rack position with a kettlebell differs from barbell differs from dumbbell, differs from club. The important part is that the fingers are pointed straight up towards the sky and the wrist is flat. If the kettlebell is in the wrong position, this will hurt over time. Figure out how to lift up the bell, get it to the correct position. The L of the hand goes to the corner, the L of the kettlebell. If there is a gap here, it will not work over time. Adjust it to get it to the correct position. 45 degree angle down. It will be resting below our joint. If the ball of the kettlebell is resting directly on our joint, then we need to get a better kettlebell that fits our body. Competition kettlebells are all one size and shape regardless of weight, and they work for the greatest number of people. So if you don't have a kettlebell yet, I would lean you towards getting a competition kettlebell. Now we are gonna set the kettlebell down Straighten your arm all the way out, point your thumb to the back, set it all the way down. Change grip in the beginning. Two hands, thumbs point straight ahead. Pick it up to our rack position. Adjust until we are at our 45 degree angle. Thumb at the height of our collarbone. Straighten your legs, squeeze your glutes, pull your belly button in. Touch this hand to help you figure out where it's at. Straighten it out, arm perfectly straight, thumb points back, set the weight all the way down. Pick it up with two hands, get it up, 
Check your handles in the right position. Check your wrist, elbow, close to hip bone. Arm perfectly straight, thumb points back, set the weight down. Repeat for an equal number on the opposite side. Dominant hand is now the left hand. Right hand is now going to support. Pick it up, left thumb equal with left collarbone. Left elbow towards left hip. Grip, correct. Left hand, straighten the arm all the way out, set it down with good technique. Start over. The goal is eventually to pick it up with two hands, put it down with one hand. Right hand dominant, right shoulder, right elbow to right hip. Straighten the arm out, go down, change sides. Left hand, pick it up, squeeze the leg, squeeze the glute, pull the ab in. Straighten the arm out, get it all the way down. Right hand, pick up. Straighten the arm out, get it down. Left hand, pick up, squeeze the glutes, abs in, straighten the arm out, get the weight all the way down. This is a small micro lesson meant to help people learn to get to the top rack position better. If your rack position is good, then you can move on to more advanced exercises until you can figure out how to get your elbow in, your wrist flat and the kettlebell in the correct position, continue to do this exercise at the beginning of every training session. It could be as simple as doing five on each side. So we're picking it up with two hands for safety and then you're trying to figure out how to get your thumb pointed back and your arm straight to set it down with good technique. Pick it up again with two hands, straight arm on the way down. The goal of this is to help you learn what it feels like to have the kettlebell in the correct position so that you can then move forward to more advanced techniques in the future.